Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session of Nambani Academy. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing and thank you very much for being here. It basically says uh, you've, you've heard about us and the basic thing that we do, the aim is to do your nice videos of maths and science so that you can be able to help one another and make physical science more interesting and give you hints and tricks and tips on how to approach certain topics. So we are currently running a series of uh, rates of reaction videos. Uh, there's a video recorded uh, previously, which explains now the basic concepts. So we are building on to that. So this is part two of the video. Kindly watch part one, so that you can be able now to follow exactly uh, what, what we, we have been discussing. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. The focus now is the collision theory. So the collision theory is just a theory that explains the factors that influence the rate of the reaction. In video one, we actually, or part one, we actually explained those factors, but not in detail because the examiners are going to say, use the collision theory to explain the influence of a certain factor. But the collision theory as it is, it is interested or concerned about now the reaction taking place. So you cannot have a successful reaction if certain specifics of the theory are not met. So let's read what the collision theory is. The collision theory explains factors influencing the rate of the reaction. It further says, The collision theory states that for chemical reactions to occur, reacting particles must collide with one another, which makes a lot of sense to say you cannot necessarily say these particles are going to react these particles are going to react if now you have a particle that is sitting here and you have now another particle sitting there. So basically is these particles for them to react, they must move and collide with one another. So if the collision does not take place, it basically says this react. Uh, particles will not react. So us having particle A and particle B, it is critical for particles to, to collide. The rate of the reaction depends on the frequency of the collision. So the more collisions we have, basically the greater the reaction rate. But particles must now collide. The number of collisions per unit time, the theory also tells us that reacting particles often collide without reacting. So them colliding the particles, which is now A and B in this instance. Let me just emphasize these are just now particles. They can even collide and now no reaction takes place. So that is the reason why we say two important statements must be met. The reacting particles for a successful or for an effective reaction to take place, they must collide with sufficient kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy will allow the particles to be able to move towards each other. So particle B must have now EK, which is half mv squared. 
which allows it now to move and this must be greater than the activation energy the same with now this one must have ek which is greater than the activation energy the reason for that is what we want these particles to start moving and once they move they will be able to collide because like i did say particle b and a will not collide unless of course if they move towards each other so they must move towards each other with a specific kinetic energy but the most important thing is they must collide with the correct orientation so these two to say particles must collide with sufficient kinetic energy and must collide also with the correct orientation is what we call now a uh, principles of the collision theory basic principles of the collision theory so if they do not have the sufficient kinetic energy they will not react if they do not have the correct orientation they will not react so they must have the correct orientation have sufficient kinetic energy for them to be able to collide that is very very important and let's put it into our minds to say it is critical for particles to have sufficient kinetic energy and also have the correct orientation furthermore it says Boltzmann distribution curve or energy distribution curve. So this is explained in terms of what we call the Boltzmann distribution curve. It's just another uh, graph that we need to understand how it works. As the energy of one of the determining factors, it is necessary to know that number of particles have kinetic energy equal or greater to the activation energy. Particles in the system represents a variety of kinetic energies. Remember, we have different particles exposed now to different kinetic energy. The distribution of kinetic energies can be shown by the graph known as the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. So Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve is just an energy distribution curve. So few particles have low kinetic energies. This is now this section here at the bottom here but furthermore you have more particles now with moderate kinetic energy is these particles that will be sitting somewhere there but furthermore when you move it says particles have very high kinetic energies which is true because as i move from left to right i know that my kinetic energy is now what is now increases so i am going to have more particles now with sufficient kinetic energy or higher kinetic energy so we will we will look into the boltzmann distribution curve in a sense of the factors that influence the rate of the reaction that is the reason why when you look at graph 2 here it will say the area under the curve is a measure of the total number of particles molecules present or the magnitude of the activation energy is indicated on the Boltzmann distribution curve as in a line for the specific kinetic energy that is the reason why the shaded area it says now it is going to be our activation energy the shaded area at the uh, the beyond this point particles have sufficient kinetic energy for effective collisions so once we move to the right we are knowing definitely that we are going to have particles with now what an increased kinetic energy once we have sufficient kinetic energy it basically says we are going to be able to get now the effective 
collagens. So what are the effective collagens? Effective collagens leads to effective reaction. So for a reaction to take place, remember, we must have now effective collagens. Once we have an effective collagen, it is now a collagen that will lead to a reaction taking place. So leads to effective reaction taking, taking place. This is very, very uh, important, ladies and gentlemen. So remember, that now the shaded area represents now the number of particles under the graph that have the sufficient kinetic energy. And this now activation energy, we did say it is just now the minimum energy needed, minimum energy needed for a reaction to take place. So once we have particles that have greater kinetic energy, which is greater than activation energy, definitely our reaction will take place. Minimum energy needed for a reaction to take place. So once we have greater kinetic energy, lower activation energy, definitely we are going to have now a reaction taking place. Why? Because that leads now to effective, effective collisions. So this is now a basic way of explaining the collision, the collision theory. Remember, Particles must collide with sufficient kinetic energy. They must also now colli co collide with correct now orientation. But that is influenced by the amount of kinetic energy that we have as well as uh, the correct orientation. The emphasis also is on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. With that being said, this brings us now to the end of uh, part two on the rates of reaction. So remember this part one of this video and now we have this part two, then we'll have part three and part four and then that will also be in terms of explaining everything that is rates of reaction related. Remember this part is the most important part in chemistry and it contributes about 40 marks in, in the exam. So we are breaking it down into sections such that each and every one of us can be able to understand and eat in chunks of smaller chunks of uh, the content itself. This is Mr. Nambani for me to you. Thank you very much. Kindly tell a friend. Remember to subscribe and follow us also on YouTube and Facebook. And let's meet on the next one. For me to you, thank you very much and have a lovely day.